What's going on YouTube OCD for EDC here and what I got for your face balls today are some Spyderco knives. These were generously donated by, or not donated, but loaned to me by one of my viewers and he goes, his name's David, and he goes by DLBY3 on Instagram. I would appreciate it if you guys would go give him a follow and check his channel or uh, uh, Instagram page out. He's got a bunch of cool knives on there, does a lot of pictures and stuff. It's really cool. And so what we've got here are a few spider coats. Just a few spider coats. So we're going to take a look at these guys and should be pretty cool, uh, hopefully. And like I said, we have just a few spider coats. So David contacted me and said, hey man, I got some cool knives. Would you like to check them out? And I said, sure, that sounds great. I would really appreciate it. And he gave me a giant mess of knives. <laughs> so he gave me enough content that, uh, yeah, uh, that I would be filming for the next uh, two years. So anyway, in interest of getting his knives back to him in some sort of a timely fashion, and I work a full-time job, so I don't have time to just sit around and film videos all the time, uh, I'm going to have to do this in kind of some chunks, because there's a few that I'm going to break out and do individually, but uh, there's so many knives here, I, I, I have to do it in chunks. So this one should be pretty cool. There's definitely some cool spider coats here that I think are super cool, ones that I have not handled before. Uh, kind of some uh, some discontinued stuff and some older stuff and yeah it's it's pretty cool so let's uh, just tear into this and and we'll just start laying them out and talk a bit about them I'm not gonna uh, tear them all apart and do my normal stuff uh, yeah just because this video will be two hours long so anyway let's just uh, get into it here we'll start with this one here and this one happens to be a Manix 2, which is one of my favorite knives that Spyderco offers. And this one is looks like a Sprint Run or a dealer exclusive or something. Let me check it out really quick. Um, this one is in, this is a Manix 2 in CPM S90V and CPM 154. And it looks like this one is a sprint run. Yeah, I don't remember uh, if this one's a dealer exclusive or a sprint run. Generally, it says right on that paper, but I'm not going to sit and read it. So, really cool. Love the Manix 2. It's one of my all-time favorite knives. Just really amazing in hand. It's got a decent thumb ramp. Cool knife. And I've said it a whole bunch of times, I like the Manix better than the PM2, that's just me. But you can see here, so you've got uh, CPM 154, if I can get the lighting right, and S90V. And you can see that line, so it's uh, sandwiched, and uh, so I'm assuming it's jacketed uh, 154 on the top and the spine, and then this is S90V along the edge. So you've got that Hamon line, and uh, yeah, pretty cool. So that's the first one. We're just going to work our way from the middle out. So this one here, oh yes. So that is a Yojimbo 2. And this one happens to be in S30V, so this is a pretty stock Yojimbo 2. Uh, but I know he put this dragon's tail uh backspacer on it and i don't know what brand this is but that's certainly an aftermarket clip mxg gear or something or maybe it's a lynch clip i, I don't know off the top of my head but compression lock action is spectacular blade centering right down broadway yeah perfect perfect construction on that guy so let's see what else we got here Oh, the coochie. Everybody loves a good coochie. So, the Spider Co. I know it's called the Ikuchi, uh, but I like to just call it the coochie. So, uh, yeah, cool knife. 
uh, Taichung, Taiwan. Uh, this I'm pretty sure these are S30V and yes it is I know my lighting sorry guys my camera and light is not working well here but uh, Taichung Taiwan um, this has the peel ply carbon and wire clip but we'll talk a little bit more once we get all these out this one here is definitely a cool knife uh, one that I had not never handled before and this one is called the uh, Pakal. Def and then here I screw up the flip twice even. So harder to do on camera, but uh, this one's also rocking CPM S30V. You got the wave opener, which is pretty cool. And uh, yeah, this is a golden Colorado knife with the bearing lock, which is super cool. And then... What do we got here? Oh, yeah. So this one here is the auto. That's the autonomy two. Uh, really cool knife and rocking uh, LC 200 N blade steel. You can see right there, the LC 200 N logo. And this is also a Golden Colorado. And I'll tell you, man, uh, this is the first auto that I've ever handled from Spider Co. And that spring is no joke in that guy. And then we have this knife here. And this is the Spider Co. Shabria. So definitely a really interesting one. Uh, uh, another one that I had never handled before. I'm pretty sure this is a discontinued model. Uh, I might be wrong on that, but this is a really interesting knife. So let's just start here. The handle on this thing is honestly mind blowing. It looks so weird and goofy. It's actually pretty comfortable. Uh, your fingers fit right up in there. And then, you know, it's, I mean, I don't think I would want to use this, uh, all day every day and and uh carry this all the time but it's definitely more ergonomic than it appears and uh the spidey hole is kind of hard to get to there it's probably better for left handers yep so just because it's a liner lock you can see there and this one it's a blade steel oh, it's vg10 uh, so this is a seiki city japan knife <clears throat> and uh, this one's got quite a bit of history. I think this is like a, a Arab knife. I can't remember if it was where this came from, India or Pakistan, something like that, this design. Uh, but there's some, you can go on uh, Spyderco forums and stuff and see the, the uh, history of this blade shape and this handle design. It's pretty cool. And I'm pretty sure, I'm, I may be mistaken on this, but I'm pretty sure that I read somewhere that these were uh, uh, originally designed to be fighting knives, like Persian kind of style fighting knives. And they used them in ceremonies and, and maybe even beheadings. Uh, so that's where you get this recurved blade shape. Um, and obviously those would be much larger than this, uh, but uh, this is kind of a throwback to that design and this hourglass shape um, handle. So cool knife definitely something pretty interesting and i'm pretty sure this guy's riding on phosphor bronze yeah it looks like it's riding on bronze washers and you got gray g10 vg10 blade steel pocket clip is not reversible so you've got uh tip down carry only and you do have this little tiny lanyard hole in the back but yeah cool knife for sure and definitely something different so I'm, I'm thankful that I got to take a look at that for sure. So the Pakal, uh, definitely also a really cool knife. Uh, definitely a very odd grip. And ergonomically, this thing, again, works a little better than it looks. Not quite as good as the Shabria, but, uh, but definitely works. So <clears throat> I, I like the bearing lock. Uh, works well and of course the the wave opener you know this is certainly a knife that you pull this out in places and people are gonna say what the hell is that you know it's just these two both of these are 
knives that people are going to ask questions about because they're just that different and odd looking. So also really cool. I personally am not a huge fan of recurves, uh, but uh, you know, <clears throat> Golden Colorado knife, um, CPMS 30V, and you know, so you, you you guys I'm sure all know the kind of quality that we're we're talking about here. You know, it's definitely well made, and yeah, it's a it's a cool knife and something certainly different. Uh, I'm pretty sure I don't know this a hundred percent, but I'm. I'm pretty sure that with these Spyderco wave pins like this, uh, they're threaded in. So I, you know, I'm not going to try to take it out or anything, but but I'm pretty sure you can remove that. Uh, that you could un, you know, unscrew that thing. There is not uh, a line cut in it, so it literally you'd have to grab it with pliers. But I, I think it is possible, and it may be a deal where it's just press fit in there. Uh, the hole does not come through on the back side, so it is a blind hole that this pin is going into. So, like I said, I'm pretty sure it's a threaded hole. <clears throat> There's some pocket lint or something stuck in that. I'm trying to get it out, but not having any luck. Anyway, so cool knife, bearing lock, uh, you know, a proven lock uh, type. And then you have uh, this area here with some some uh jimping similar to the manix uh where it's the jimpings in the liners and it just sits ever so slightly proud of the the scales here again you're rocking g10 scales here black g10 and just got the standard uh, uh golden colorado texture on the the g10 <clears throat> the autonomy 2 is an is a beast um actually I got my scale sitting right here. I should be doing this. So we can do this really quick. Um, get a length on this blade. So 2.97 inches on the Pakal. And 3.692 ounces. So just under 3 inch blade, 3.6 ounces. And the Shabria has a big blade. So we're 3.8 inches on the blade on the Shabria. And 4.17 ounces. So definitely, you know, this is full liners. Uh, probably a little heavier than what you would expect given the form factor here. But, but yeah, nice knife. So the Autonomy. This thing is a beast. Uh, flipping action or the auto action on this guy is really stellar. Blade length on the Autonomy 2 is 3.618. And like I said, guys, the, the uh, spring on this guy is no joke. You, uh, yeah, that thing rockets out. This is, this is a badass knife for sure. Let's get a weight on this guy. 5.446, so five and a half ounces. You can see you got a massive lanyard tube back here. Um, and uh, pocket clip is right or left tip up carry. And then you've got uh, the safety here. So when the safety's on, you cannot push the button. The button's pretty interesting. It uh, sticks quite a ways outside of the scale. Uh, and it's dished out. There is no... Uh, jimping or traction knurling or anything on the face of the button uh, but the traction just comes from that center being recessed so the you know the skin on your thumb kind of goes down into that whole area and yeah so of course you know spider coat you got to have a hole through the blade and in this case here it's a tiny little hole um, but but yeah this this knife is really really cool uh, you can see in the back side here, let me grab a tool, so you can see the the uh, spring for the button to release it. That, that portion of the scale right there is what provides uh, the spring tension for the button, which is kind of cool. It's just simple and, and, you know, cuts down on the number of parts, uh, which is really cool, but man, that... 
<laughs> that that spring, the pivot spring on this thing is for real. That thing comes out with authority. So, um, let's uh, check out the Manix 2. This is a really cool uh, version here. Uh, you got the peel ply carbon fiber, uh, and you know, of course, the texture is is very very grippy on that stuff. Uh, standard Manix pocket clip just works well, you know. Nothing, no frills, not deep carry, just just works. And uh, the Manix 2, like I said, certainly one of my favorites. And this one here is a cool one, having the the sand my um, yeah sand my construction on the blade. Uh, where you've got a harder steel that is sandwiched uh, in between two softer steels. Uh, so, you you know, CPM 154 and then S90V. So, pretty cool uh, sandwich blade construction. It's pretty cool that you can see that line on the blade. Uh, yeah, definitely a cool knife. And this is a really nice example, blade centered. Yeah, really well done. One of my favorites, and this one just happens to be even that much cooler because it's a sprint run so then we got the yojimbo 2 <clears throat> this is a knife that uh i have a couple um yojimbos i don't ever uh, carry them uh it's not a knife that i re necessarily really enjoy uh but uh i mean it's fine it, it, it just is what it is I, I like the hollow grind on the blade i wish spiderco would do more hollow ground blades uh, but it's, you know, the Warncliffe, the Warncliffe part's fine. Um, I'm just not uh, a huge fan of the Ergos on this guy. Uh, I, yeah, I mean, it's just, it's, it's okay. I'm just kind of indifferent on it. It's not the greatest thing ever. It's not the worst thing ever. It's just, uh, I know some people that really, really love this thing and hey, that's great. Um, for me, you know, it's really compression lock, um, I like the compression lock. I enjoy fidgeting with it in my right hand. Uh, it's not that great to do on my left. So, you know, it, it works. You just have to make it a two-step process or risk uh, dropping the knife, trying to barely hold on to it. So, Yojimbo 2, cool knife. Uh, not my favorite thing, but, you know, teach their own. So, oh, and I didn't weigh it didn't weigh the Manix either. Um, let's get a blade length here on the Yojimbo. So we're 3.25, so three and a quarter inch blade. And we're looking at 4.14 ounces. Um, and like I said, this one does have an aftermarket backspacer and clip. I don't imagine that really added much weight at all to G10 backspacer and a, and a titanium clip so it actually may have even may be slightly lighter than factory uh, just because it's not a stainless steel clip but so we're 3.35 inches of blade on the Manix and we are just over four ounces 4.065 so cool knife so now we're down to the super slender, super lightweight Coochie. Uh, this Paul Alexander design, it's a cool little knife. Um, you know, for me, it's it's a little smaller <clears throat> than I personally like. Um, it, it's got the same peel ply carbon fiber that the, the Manix is sporting here. However, this is the Tai Chung uh, version, if I remember right. Yeah, Tai Chung. And this is from the Golden. And I don't know if you'll be able to hear this or not, but I'm scratching my fingernail on the the carbon or the peel ply carbon on the Manix. And you can tell that it's really, really grippy. Where on the Akuchi, it's just it's it just doesn't have the same sort of finish and texture that the the uh, Manix has. And so it makes it a little bit slick. Uh, it's not terrible, uh, but with as small and slender as this knife is, and you really just don't have a lot of texturing to hold on to, uh, you know, it's it's not so much in this grip here. I mean, when you have 
you know, a full grip on this knife. I don't feel like it's going anywhere, but it's the manipulation of the knife. The <clears throat> for the compression lock on this guy, the the relief cut that you have, the area to get into it's just very very small. So you really kind of have to use your fingernail, or at least I do. Um, and so it just it makes it a little slippery and a little little weird to hold on to. Um, you know, I really dig the blade shape on this guy. Um, you know, it's a nice thin slicey little blade, which is cool. And, you know, this thing certainly, uh, would work well for a lot of EDC tasks. Again, not great for left-handers with the, the compression lock. You really just kind of have to jam your thumb in there and push that thing over. <clears throat> and then the action on it, um, you know, the blade is pretty lightweight. And so you really have to either fully release the lock bar and then just whip it down like that right there which you can do a little harder on camera but um i can make it happen uh but with the left hand it's just i you know i gotta jam my thumb in there and then get it to pass the lock and then push it down it's just it's it's not my favorite design um but uh i like the blade shape and the blade design uh, not loving the compression lock on this model and the access to it and <clears throat> the fact that the peel ply carbon is not nearly as textured as like what's on this Manix here. I think this would have helped quite a bit just to add some some more grip to this thing when you're trying to manipulate the lock bar and such. But I do like the flipper design. You know, that part's really great. Super slender to carry in pocket. You got no flipper tab hanging out here. So there's some cool stuff here for sure. Uh, just a few little negatives that make this not the most fun to carry. Um, so, yeah, you know, I think there's some positives. Uh, so anyway, uh, let's get a length on this guy. So you're looking at just over a three and quarter inch blade. 3.269 and what do we got here for weight this thing is going to be pretty light yeah 2.4 ounces so really lightweight knife i'm sure that's not shocking to anyone <clears throat> it's really small and slender and and cool you know I, I like the flipper wheel on the back is cool i just some of the other things just make it a little cumbersome to use so Anyway, guys, I don't know uh, if there's anything here that you're absolutely loving or not, but uh, definitely some cool knives, and I'm really blessed to be able to check all these out and have a viewer nice enough to let me uh, take a look at his babies. So there we go, guys. Got a little uh, Spider Co. Knife of Palooza here. So. Thanks a lot again, David, for letting me take a look at these guys. Really digging them. <clears throat> I'm really cool to get to see some of these really oddball ones that uh, may be discontinued and such. So I greatly appreciate it. But that's about it. Uh, check out the links below. There's some uh, uh, affiliate links down there if you guys are interested in any of the gear and different things that you see on my channel. There's a bunch of stuff listed down there. Anytime you use those links, it certainly helps me out and helps support the channel. So I greatly appreciate it. And go on Instagram and give David a follow, DLBY3. And yeah, he's got a lot more knives than what I'm showing here. And give him a follow and help support him as well. So thanks a lot, guys. Have a good one, and we will catch you next time.